something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, I mean, you say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower. You know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use. And when you sing straight from the word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because he is the word and he is perfect theology. Oh God, you
are satisfied So our lips begin to praise As we lift our hands and pray Your love is so much better Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's been our privilege and joy to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God, just meditating in His Word, spending some time together in His presence and praying with you. Over the last few weeks, we've been taking time just to meditate in a psalm and we like to do that again on our program today. Have you ever been in a season in life where everything seems so dry? Where you seem like, you know, life is dry. Uh, I feel dry. You try to worship God and it seems like God is so far away. Uh, everything seems dry, seems barren. And uh, what do you do in those seasons of dryness or those dry seasons of life. I mean, you're feeling that way. I'm not saying necessarily that life is like that, but you're feeling like that. You feel dry in your spirit. You feel dry emotionally. You feel dry in, in, in all that you do. Uh, there is, uh, you feel that there's something missing. And uh, uh, how, do you, how do you approach God in, in, in such uh, a, a time? Now, David, when he was king, faced something in his life which probably he didn't anticipate when one of his own sons, Absalom, rebelled against him. And here was David, who was uh, probably at this time in his early 60s. And, uh, you know, he, he was pretty well advanced in age. He'd, he'd established himself as king, and I'm sure he never imagined such a thing happening in his life that one of his own sons would rebel against him to the point where David had to leave his palace in Jerusalem, run away uh, uh, for his life, run for his own life. And uh, he could hear the crowds of people uh, shouting and supporting Absalom, his, his son, as king, this rebellious son as king, uh, not the son who, who would have taken to his throne uh, in a proper manner. But here was somebody who was rebelling against him and wanting to dethrone David. And while he's on this journey, fleeing for his own life, uh, the Bible records this for us in 2 Samuel uh, chapters 15, 16. And uh, it tells us he comes, to, he and uh, the people who were with him, a few of them who were his supporters who were with him, uh, they are really thirsty. They have been running for their lives, uh, they are thirsty. They're going through a, a, a dry pe uh, a parcel of land. They're going through a dry phase. Uh, and they finally arrive uh, at a place where they're able to refresh themselves. And you read about this in 2 Samuel 16, uh, verse 14. I'll just quote that. It says, Now the king and all the people who were with him became weary. That means they were tired. They'd been running for their lives. No water, thirsty. And finally they came to a place where they were able to refresh themselves. And so it says, they refresh themselves here. Psalm 63 is a psalm that David wrote when he was running for his life. At this juncture of his life, a 60-plus-year-old year David running for his life from Absalom, having to go through a time when he and his people couldn't find any water, uh, and they finally arrive at a place where they could refresh themselves. And he must have spent that night, uh, we don't know, maybe in some hut somewhere or some open place somewhere with people around him and so on. And in that juncture of his life, he writes Psalm 63. So let's read Psalm 63, understanding when David wrote and what is the expression of his heart at a time like this. Psalm 63, verse 1. O God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you 
in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So you see David, at this time in his life, who is translating something that's happening to him in the natural towards a spiritual thirst for God. In the natural, what's happening? He says, I'm in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. He says, God, I'm going to drive time. In the natural, that's how it is. I'm going through a dry land where there is no water. But what is David doing? He's turning that around into his hunger and thirst for God. He says, God, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. Early will I seek you. So he's saying, God, you know, I, I, you can just try to envision or imagine what's going on in David's mind. He's saying, look, you know, I'm old, and if I'm going to, it's physically, I'm, hung, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. How much more should my hunger and thirst be for God at this time? And so he's, he's crying out to God. He's expressing his hunger and thirst for God. And he's saying, God, I want, I want a hunger for you. I want to thirst for you so much more. And I'm going to seek you early. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to seek you. So in a dry time of life, what must we do? Seek God. Even when you don't feel like it, you still seek him. Early will I seek you. So get up early. Seek him. Hunger for him. Thirst for him. And David says, So I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Notice he says, I looked for you in the sanctuary, in God's dwelling place. I want to see your power and your glory. You know, many times in our dry seasons of life, we don't even feel like going to the sanctuary of God. And that's not the right thing to do. In your dry season of life, you say, God, I am going to search for you in your sanctuary where your people are gathering together, where your people are coming together to worship you. I'm going to go there. I'm going to seek for you in your sanctuary. And I'm coming with expectation, God. I want to see your power and your glory. I want to encounter you as I seek for you in your congregation, among your people. And he says, the reason I do this is because I know something. I know, verse, he says in verse 3, your loving kindness is better than life, and my lips shall praise you. You see, in our dry seasons of life, there's one thing we must remember, that God's loving kindness never runs dry. His love and his kindness towards us has not run dry. You may feel in the natural dryness. You may feel like you're going through a dry spell or a dry season of your life, but God's love and God's kindness towards you, his loving kindness, has not run dry. It is even better, David says, than life itself. That means that's how valuable his loving kindness is for us, better than even life. And so David says, I will praise you. So try to imagine David being there in that night or those nights when he was away from his palace, having to run for his life in a forsaken place, and there he's saying, God, your loving kindness is there towards me, even in this situation. Your loving kindness has not run dry, and I'm going to praise you, God. I will still praise you, because God, I long for you. I thirst for you. Right here, right now, in this moment of my life, my eyes are towards you. And he continues, verse 4, Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul will be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. He continues to bless God. He lifts his hands up to God, towards God, and he says, I'm going to continue to praise you with joyful lips, and my soul, my inner person, is going to be satisfied. Just as though my body was satisfied with marrow and fatness. Now, obviously, at that time, he was not having marrow and fatness. He was not able to eat that in the natural. He was running for his life. He was in a forsaken place. But he says, my inner person is going to be satisfied with God 
just as though I, just as satis- I would feel that satisfied as if I had had a great meal with marrow and fatness, meaning that, that big spread that he would have had as a king in the palace, which he does not have right now because he's in a dry place. He says, my soul will be satisfied with marrow and fatness. How does that come from? Or how does that come? Because he says, I will lift up my hands to you. I will praise you with joyful lips. And then he continues. He says in verse 6, When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. Now, try to again imagine this. David must be, must be sleeping in a very simple place in contrast to what he, the kind of palatial bed that he would have been sleeping all these years. And now suddenly he finds himself maybe sleeping on a, you know, a mattress somewhere on the floor or in somebody's borrowed bed. And he says, Lord, I remember you on my bed. And I'm meditating on you in the night watches. Maybe he's lying, lying awake, wondering, God, what's going on? What's happening? Why am I here? How did I end up here in this dry and forsaken place? How did I end up here? And then he says, Lord, I remember you. I meditate upon you in the night watches. I'm awake at night, but my thoughts are toward you. And his thoughts are not one of resentment, anger, or questioning, but he is acknowledging that God is his help and that he is going to trust in God's protection and he's going to be happy. He says that in verse 7, because you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. Can you imagine David being in that situation in life and he still says, God, you've been my help. The fact that I'm alive, Absalom could have had me killed. Those people who are with him could have had me killed. But Lord, I'm alive. You've been my help. And God, under your safety, I will be happy. I will rejoice under the shadow of your wings. And he continues saying in verse 8, My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. He says, God, I'm going to continue coming after you. Coming after close to you because you're the one who's upholding my life. Then he concludes with these words as he prays for, against those who are unjustly oppressing him. He says in verse 9, 10, and 11, but those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. You know, suddenly David realizes Absalom has had been sitting at the gate of the city speaking lies about the king. If you read the narrative, the years that led up to this rebellion, Absalom was sitting there at the gates telling all the people, you know, the king has no time for you. The king really doesn't care for you. I will take care of you. I will you know, make sure that your situations are resolved quickly, your justice is given out very quickly. Absalom was doing this at the gates, building up towards this rebellion. And now David realizes all that has happened, and David decrees or he announces victory uh, uh, through his prayer. He says, God, I know that those who are seeking my life to destroy, they are going to be destroyed, but I am going, the king, referring to himself, He says in verse 11, I'm going to rejoice in my God. Those who stand by uh, with me, they will see the glory of God. And he says, those who speak lies, their mouths are going to be stopped. So what do you do in a dry season? What do you do when you find yourself in a time and a place where you feel dry? Here's what David did. He turned his natural dryness and his experience in the natural as a drive towards seeking God with greater intensity. He turned that around and he said, God, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to rejoice in you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. 
I'm going to lift up my hands towards you. My soul will follow close after you. Just as I feel so dry and so desirous of water and, and food, I'm turning that around. I'm going to seek you because of one thing, your loving kindness, O oh God, towards me. That will never run dry. And your loving kindness is better than life. As the Bible says in the New Testament, what will separate us from the love that God has for us in Christ Jesus? Can persecution, can nakedness, can peril, can, can a, a sword, can any kind of oppression separate us from the love of God? It's nothing. God's loving kindness is better than life. Turn your attention towards him. In seasons, in, in seasons of dryness, seek him more. He will come as a refreshing rain. His loving kindness will refresh our lives. Let's pray together. Father, I just pray with those watching, those listening, God. And Father, if any of us are going through this dry season of life, I pray that like David, we will turn that into a hunger and thirst for you. And we will draw, Lord, that refreshing and renewing that comes from you. That we will be revived, refreshed, because your loving kindness will never run dry. And I pray that those listening will experience that reviving and renewing that comes from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence, light and life, pure delight. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence, light and life, pure delight. Sing forth with life unending Breathing in your love, your love Sing forth with life unending Breathing in your love, your love I believe I'm rooted by the river Drinking deep from life Shaken, I'm alive, I'm alive. I believe I'm rooted by the river, drinking deep from life giving streams. In your truth, I stand on shaken.
fought with life unending. 